Hello, welcome to Snippets, Bits and Bobs, a channel of weekly eclectic excerpts from classic and contemporary literature, lyrics, and even recipes I read in a relaxing, soft-spoken ASMR style. Check the description box below to learn more about ASMR. I hope you'll be as excited as I am each week as I share new topics with you. Hello and welcome to our oasis of place and mental space, our inner sanctum, so to speak, to unwind and decompress and slow our pace to listen to today's readings. Today I want to talk about aspects of gratitude and giving thanks. You know, Thanksgiving Day in the United States is celebrated on the last Thursday each November. I'm so grateful to your visiting this channel today. So stay for a bit to hear words of gratitude and a very short, short story at the end. You know, there are countless benefits associated with being grateful. It puts you in a frame of positive grace in heart, mind, and soul. Gratitude offers increased levels of happiness and life satisfaction, and giving thanks is one of the most powerful ways there is to increase your well-being. Sonia Lubomirsky, from her book, The How of Happiness, A New Approach to Getting the Life You Want, says, Some of you may choose a fixed time simply to contemplate each of your objects of gratitude and perhaps also to reflect on why you are grateful and how your life has been enriched, or you may choose to identify just one thing, just one thing that you appreciate each day that you usually take for granted. Or you can acknowledge one ungrateful thought per day. For example, she says, my sister forgot my birthday and instead substitute it with a grateful one. For example, she's always been there for me. Express gratitude directly to another person by phone, letter, or in person. If there's someone in particular whom you owe a debt of gratitude, express your appreciation in concrete terms. Acknowledge what that person did and how it affected your life. In this next selection, it's a poem entitled Gratitude by John Davis. And his most recent book is called An Amiable Reception for the Acrobat. Forget each slight, each head that turned towards something more intriguing red flash of wing beyond the window. The woman brightly chiming about the suffering of the world. Forget the way your best friend told the story of that heroic road trip, forgetting that you drove from Tulsa to Poughkeepsie while he slumped dozing under headphones. Forget the honors handed out, the lists of winners, 
forget the certificates, bright trophies you could have, should have, maybe won. Remind yourself you never wanted them when the spotlight briefly shone on you you step back into darkness let the empty stage receive the light the black floor suddenly less black scuff marks dust blue tape the cone of light so perfect slicing silently that perfect silent darkness and you hidden in that wider dark your refusal a kind of gratitude at last If you like this video or this channel, please subscribe, like, or comment. Thank you. Here are three short quotes of gratitude that I discovered from PoetrySoup.com. Melody Beatty says, Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Sarah Ban Brethnock says, both abundance and lack exist simultaneously in our lives as parallel realities it is always our conscious choice which secret garden we will tend when we choose not to focus on what is missing from our lives but are grateful for the abundance that's present love health family friends work the joys of nature and personal pursuits that bring us pleasure the wasteland of illusion falls away and we experience heaven on earth. Next, Henri Frederic Amiel says, Thanks thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. And thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in acts. The final selection is an inspirational short story called The Seed in the Mud. The Seed in the Mud is a story by Paul Birchtoad. The story is available at thankyourstars.com. It's thank-your-stars.com and is used with the permission of the author. Its essence to me is about showing gratitude even in our challenges that toss and turn us or even when the gains we make along the way seem so, so small the seed in the mud. Once upon a time there was a seed buried in the mud. It was in dark blackness. It was cold and wet. It shivered. 
It was just plain no fun. It was icky, it was dirty, it was muddy. It was mucky, it was stuck in the mud. How it got there is a little three-sentence story. One nice breezy fall day it had fallen on the ground. Then it rained a little and a deer came along and stepped on it and pushed it deep in the mud. Life just wasn't fair. It was all alone. If only it had fallen like the other seeds in the grass or on the log over there or at least not been stepped on. But what the little seed did not see was the mouse that ate the seeds in the grass and the bird that ate the seeds on the log and the chipmunk that gathered the seeds on the ground to store and eat all winter long. It couldn't see this because it was stuck in the mud. It didn't know how lucky it was. Now, besides being squished right in the mud, it was also locked in its shell. It tried to get out of its terrible predicament. But the fall days got shorter and shorter. It got colder and colder too. It had no strength to get out of its shell. The mud was frozen solid. The deep snow covered it. It went through a terrible cold and dark winter. Finally, after what seemed forever, slowly the days grew a little longer, a little warmer. The seed had work to do. It began to grow. The water in the mud had softened its shell. Still, how hard it was to get out of its shell. It had to exert energy like never before. It struggled and struggled. Finally, it broke free. Then it used more energy to go, not up, but down, struggling to send a tiny little root through that compacted mud, that terribly icky place. It needed something to tightly hold on to because now it had to struggle yet again with great effort to send a tiny little shoot to the light above through all that icky mud. Finally, it was free. It reached the warm sunlight. You would think its troubles were over. Not so fast. In a whole year, it grew only a few inches while the other plants grew by leaps and bounds, as if to mock the little seed. Every fall it lost its leaves. In winter, it barely survived, covered with snow. And as it got a little taller, it had to grow through windstorms and blizzards. But one thing was peculiar. Even while it slowly grew up the sunny blue sky, it never forgot its roots. It had the wisdom to keep growing its roots deeper and deeper in the mud. In fact, it used every windstorm, every blizzard, every shaking, every vibration to wiggle its roots deeper and deeper into the black icky mud. It knew the importance of a solid foundation because it always remembered where it came from 
how it had been protected and helped by the mud. The years rolled on, and the seasons too. Each summer it so slowly but surely grew. Each winter it became a little tougher and stronger. It had little joys and little sorrows throughout its life like all of us do. Then came the fiercest of all storms. The wind blew so violently this way and that. Trees all around were dashed to the ground, broken, uprooted, a jangled mess. After the devastation, the sun shone once again. To be sure, it didn't look so pretty. Some leaves were missing, in fact, quite a few, but that would soon be remedied because it hadn't forgotten its roots as a seed in the mud. It stood there in all its glory. It had become the mighty oak tree. Thank you for listening. Let's give thanks for the big and little events that have shaped our lives. Welcome new subscribers. If you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe and hit the like button. Also, share your comments below about this video and tell me what topics you want to hear in future videos. If you'd like to see recent videos of snippets, bits and bobs, see the links in the description. Also, click on the bell icon on your right to get the latest videos when they are uploaded, usually each week on Tuesdays. Can't wait to share next week's theme with you. So, have a Good week and see you soon at Snippets, Bits and Bobs. Bye-bye.